What's going on guys? In this video we're going to install MongoDB locally using Docker and then we're going to create a new project with Strapi that will be connected to this database. Remember to subscribe to the channel and let's get started. Okay, let's install MongoDB locally using Docker. First we need to pull the official image from Docker. So this is docker pull mongo. Okay, now we downloaded the latest mongo image. So if we run docker images, we should see the image listed there. Here it is. And now we can run a container using this image. So this is docker run. We are going to make this container run in the background. So this will be minus D. We can assign a name to the container, dash dash name, let's say MongoDB. We are going to use the default port for Mongo and we are going to map the local port to the remote port with that default value. So this will be 27.0.1.7 and the remote port or the port of the container will be 27.0.1.7. I forgot to add the port flag here. Now I need to add two environment variables that will be the root username and the root user password. And this is mongo initdb root username. And let's say mongo. And another environment variable for the password. So this is mongo initdb root password. And here I'm going to assign Mongo as the password. And the last value here will be Mongo. That is the name of this image. Let's run this. And if we run Docker PS, yes, we're going to see the container running using the Mongo image. Here we can also see the local port and the mapping with the container port. Okay, now let's go to MongoDB Compass and let's create a new connection to this database. So here we need to enter the connection string. So here we need to enter MongoDB and we need to add the user and the password. In our case, this will be Mongo, Mongo. And we need to add at and the host that in our case is localhost and the port. We are using the default one. So this is 27017. And we also need to specify outsource and this needs to be admin. Now I'm going to click here on connect and we should be able to see the default databases and collections generated by Mongo. Here we have the admin database, the config database and the local database. Okay, now let's go to the terminal and let's create a new Strapi application connected to this MongoDB database. So this is npx create a strapi app and the name of the app will be strapi mongo okay and here we can use the quick start or we can use a custom installation if we follow the quick start this will install the strapi project with sqlite by default and is going to build the admin ui for us if we choose custom we can select the database that we want to use and we also need to build the admin UI by ourselves. So here we're going to select a custom installation and here we are going to select MongoDB. I'm going to keep the same name for the Mongo database. Here this will be localhost. We're going to use our local MongoDB instance and this will be false. The port will be the default one, 27017. And the username will be Mongo. The password will be Mongo as well. And we're going to keep this blank. We're not going to enable SSL connection. And that's pretty much it. This is going to create a project connected to MongoDB. It's going to install all the dependencies. Okay, our new project is ready. So let's enter to the project folder. This is Strapi Mongo. And now we need to build the admin UI. So we need to execute npm run build. This is going to generate all the static assets and HTML files for the Strapi admin UI. All right, so our admin UI is ready. 
let's go to Visual Studio Code and let me show you a couple of things. So first, if we go here to config database, we're going to see that we have all the values that we assigned when we generated this project. We have the host, we have the port, the database name, the username and the password for the database. And here we can also see, if we go to the package JSON file, we have a dependency here, the Strapi connector mongoose. This is the library or dependency that Strapi is going to use to connect with the MongoDB database. So let's open a new terminal and let's run the admin UI using the development mode so that we can create a content type and I can show you what are the changes that is going to perform in the database. So this is npm run develop. Okay, I'm going to set up an admin user here really quickly. And here I'm going to create a new content type. I'm going to create a new collection type. And this will be pants. I'm going to see that this name will be used to create a new collection in our database. But first let's create this collection type. So we are going to store the name of the band. We're going to add another field. Let's say the genre of the band. And we are also going to store the website of the band. We're going to finish here and then we're going to save this new content type. Okay, and now here we can go to bands and we can add a new band by clicking here on add new bands. So here I'm going to add a new band, let's say ACDC. The genre will be metal and the website will be www.acdc.com. I'm going to save this document. Okay, now if we go to the MongoDB database using MongoDB Compass, I'm going to refresh here. And as we can see here, we have the Strapi Mongo database. This is the name that we assigned when we created the project. And here we have this collection that is basically created with the name that we have specified as the content type in Strapi. And here we have our first document with the name of the band that we just created. And here we have some other collections generated by Strapi, such as collections to manage user permissions. We have collection to manage webhooks, to manage roles, another collection for the administrator user, another collection for file uploads, and also this core store collection to store internal metadata. That's all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching, and I see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.